I recall in graduate school, getting a graduate degree for education and more than one of my professors warning us new teachers who were about to start our um, apprenticeships, working as teachers helpers or um, going into schools for the first time, warning us to steer clear of the teacher's lounge. I actually think there was some reading in the syllabus um, related to the toxicity that exists in teacher's lounges. Now, granted, in some of the schools that I worked in, you very rarely were in the teacher's lounge. You very rarely had an opportunity to go somewhere outside of your classroom to sit and relax or eat lunch. And in some of the schools that I worked in, the teacher's lounge was actually where a vending machine was or the microwave uh, that you'd want to use to heat up your lunch or maybe even something as crucial as the copy machine. So there was no avoiding the teacher's lounge. But before taking on my own class and beginning my career as a full-time teacher, I did steer clear of the teacher's lounge as much as I could. I remember in the schools that I worked in where it was unavoidable, where you had to go in for printouts or to use the communal um, computer to access the school's portal or something like that, that I always tried to quickly leave. And when I didn't, when I lingered a little bit, I was always very curious about why the teacher's lounge was such a toxic environment. Something that actually proved to be true. The teacher's lounge was often the place where people gossiped, where people griped, and where a new teacher would sooner than later find themselves in an uncomfortable conversation that they weren't prepared for and they maybe didn't need to have. I found myself in several of those situations, uh, being a, you asked a question about scheduling or asked by um, a substitute who was actually interested in a full-time job, things that I had no knowledge of um, and feeling cornered in the, that space. And I thought about this and this stayed with me, how this was actually the area that should be for comfort of teachers. And I think about how in most of the schools that I've worked in, how little space was allotted for teachers. And how even when you were trying to create the space that you taught in and the learning environment that you created in your room, you most often had to follow guidelines what you were putting on your walls, what was expected to be shown, or maybe even a checklist was provided to tell you what actually you should be decorating your classroom with. I remember in several of the classrooms that I was in charge of decorating and creating a learning environment, being cautioned by administrators and principals that there was too much going on in the room and then I should, you know, take this or that down. And most of the time it was student work that they were actually asking me to take down, which I thought was very instructive. In a space where I'm essentially creating the refrigerator artwork moment that some kids will get to have in, in their school where somebody's um, proud of their work, um, it was in some ways distracting to administrators. And then I come back to the toxicity of the teacher's lounge, of finding the spaces that you can create that are your students' learning environment and your work environment being in some ways strategized out from your ability to be creative. And then the room where you're actually able to relax, being a hotbed of toxic 
gossip. I remember recognizing this, recognizing well, where do I go? Where do I go to relax? Where do, I, where do I go? Where can I just breathe? In some schools, it was the guidance counselor's office. And to the guidance counselors that I've worked with, I immediately gra gravitated towards your offices, got to know you for professional reasons, wanted to know who was there to support the students, but also because those were the people who created environments where people could relax. And that was something I needed too. I started to think about this also because I recognized not only were there very few spaces where teachers and students were encouraged to be themselves and encouraged to be expressive and creative and, and really stretch themselves out, but I also recognized there was very little space dedicated to you and your colleagues having any kind of rapport. I remember more often than not being shooed away from a hallway chatter with a teacher or talking um, almost like it reminds me of Joe Pesci in Casino with your hand over your mouth, trying not to have anybody be able to read your lips as you know some school officials coming down the hallway and you just want to get a quick word in with one of your colleagues about something. We had to hide engaging with our peers. In some ways it was seen as kind of um, fraternizing and that wasn't the poise that you should be having. It should be all business. And I remember how lonely that felt. Walking into school, maybe saying hello to a security officer, because every school I've worked in had a security, security officer. It's only recently working outside of um, New York City and California that I've been in schools where there was not a patrol. But saying hello as you walked in going to your classroom, and then essentially putting on a mask that you didn't need these very visceral interactions with others, that you were just about business and just about moving on with the lesson and just about getting to that assessment and that summation. And then when the day was over, it was almost like exhaling and that's why so often um, I would be up on the phone for hours with another teacher that I worked with, filling each other in on the day. I also remember hanging out with teachers in school coordinated and organized events that were nothing at all that was comfortable. You were being watched, you were being judged, you were being put into different boxes. And a lot of the time, anything that went amiss on those occasions was remembered and discussed ad nauseum, not only with the people who were there for the event, the teacher who got a little too tipsy, the teacher who made that off color remark, the teachers that looked like they were flirting, but that would often be repeated throughout the school year. It was not just an occasion, it now became your identity. I steered clear of all sorts of things like that to the extent that I isolated myself, to the extent that I recognized that I had very few friends at work. And up until this point, becoming a teacher, I had always a gaggle of, group, uh, of people that it were, I was involved with, a group that I could hang out with after work, for happy hour, during lunch. And after I became a teacher, I was alone. When I would be with students, I would be so energized, so charged that that relationship was so important. But I craved a, a relationship with my peers. 
I joined the teachers union. I joined organized groups for educators of color. I joined groups of teachers who wanted to teach around social justice work. I uh, tried to build community, but often that community was not represented for me on a daily basis. And how draining that is. How draining it is to be isolated, to be alienated and to feel so alone in your work. How isolating it still is. Because even now, as a teacher who teaches primarily online, I have no community in my teaching. Sure, we have a Slack group, we have an email thread, or we have debriefing meetings around our work. But it's not the collegiate, engaging interaction that most people enjoy at work. It's not the coffee room banter. It's not even loose and easy. It's links and shares and resources and please click an emoji to show that you've read this whole thread. It's performing. It's performing your attendance. And how now, as an online teacher, I don't get to stand in the doorway of my classroom and watch kids go by and have an interaction or have moments that make me smile. In between classes, I'm literally messing with technology, to be honest, making sure things are all working, making sure that things are all up to date, opening up tabs and that kind of thing. I used to be very skeptical about why I was told to steer clear of the teacher's lounge. And I wanted to challenge that. And I wanted to create something different. I created a Facebook group for teachers. But all that ended up happening was feeling that the Facebook group space was becoming infiltrated with politics. And pretty soon that, that ended up stopping folks feeling comfortable sharing um, their experiences on Facebook. Where are our spaces as we are changing, as our environments are changing, as I become skeptical that taking the teachers out of teaching is a very real plan and our spaces were already few and far between to coalesce and just engage one another and be free to talk about the work. Where are our spaces that we can hold strong to, that we can call our own, that are more engaging than an email thread, that are more immediate than a Zoom meeting? Where are the spaces that we gather? And how do we do that with one another? How do we find, how do we build, and how do we cultivate community? Not only in an online space, not only in an in-person space, but in any space. Where is our non-toxic teacher's lounge? I'm hoping I'm building one. And I wanna know if you're down to join me there. <laughs>